الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين صلى الله على محمد محمد وعجل فرجه Last week we first look at the compilers of the Quran if you remember those who compiled Quran and we look at different views as to how Quran was compiled. So now the first question is, how many views do we have, especially from those who are here, regarding the compilation of Quran? How many views do we have? Four. Huh? She's saying three, you're saying four. Two. Two. Three. 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 Oh. So how many views do we have in total? Huh? We have from Sayyid Bukhari, then Biharul Anwar, and Tariq Al-Quran. What are the views, Sister Square? Hmm. The first view? What is the view of Sayyid Bukhari? There were four who compiled it. Okay. Four names. Okay. And uh, there was also a Muhammad who asked Anasan. No, no. <laughs> he said no. <laughs> okay, Mama, if you say no, yes, you see, we have, uh, as I mentioned last week, we finished with compilation of Quran. Those who wrote Quran different from writing and compile isn't it yes who can tell you what is the difference between compilation and writing of quran who can tell me yes mama jam al quran so what is kitab al quran the writing of the quran and what is jam al quran compilation of quran okay now let me ask a question when we say Kitab al Quran, there are, especially those who are here, the writing of the Quran, what do I mean? Who can tell me? Prof? Writing of the Quran means uh, the most people who were there. Okay. What is the term given to them, referred to them in Quranic science? In Quranic science, there is a term referred to those who wrote Quran, who put down what they, Mama? La? Kutab al Quran. But in English, scribes of revelation. So now, if you tell me there are three views when it comes to the compilers of the Quran, what is number one view? Who can tell me? And one view is, of course, you quoted the book, but what is the view? The four people who compiled Muay. Four people who compiled Quran. According to which book? Uh, Sayyid Bukhari. Sayyid Bukhari, which is quoted that there are four compilers of the Holy Quran. Number one? Ubay ibn Ka'ab. Ubay ibn Ka'ab. Number two? Muaz ibn Jabal. Muaz ibn Jabal. Number three? Number three, Zaid ibn The men acquired Zaid ibn Thabit. Thabit. And number four? Thabit. Zayd. Abu Zayd. These are the four compilers of Quran according to Bukhari. The second view is what? Bihar al Anwar, which is our own book. How many people in Bihar? Five. Huh? Four. Four. Three, four, and four. <laughs> oh, he added one more. He added one more. Who did he add? Abu al Darda. Abu al Darda. MashaAllah, Mama. Then the last view, now keep going, let me ask the fathers. The last view. Zanjani. Uh huh? Sheikh Zanjani. Zanjani, okay, what did he say? He added extra more people. Okay, extra more personalities. who were the personalities? Imam Ali. Imam Ali, Imam number two, Shafiqli. and the rest of those group, huh? So now when we discuss these four or three views, which one did we say is the most authentic view? Thabit. 
the third one Abu Abdullah as Zanjani why did we say that third view is the most authentic view mama and why because he has concluded Imam Ali why from the fact that Imam because Ali's name is there Quran was compiled during the lifetime of the prophet and so so Imam Ali should be there. No, it's He's not there. But he has two views contradicting him. He has? Two views Yeah. He says that it was compiled during the Prophet's time. Uh -huh. Aha, and, and he said what? It was compiled after the Prophet. Fantastic. So definitely we are of the view that Quran was completely compiled during the lifetime of Rasulullah. Who can give me a reason why Quran was completely compiled during the lifetime of Rasulullah? If this Quran says that it has settled down the Kitab. Ah, it is Kitab. How can you explain why? How do you use the word Kitab to qualify or quantify the notion that Quran was compiled during the lifetime of Prophet? Kitab means the book. Kitab means the, the book. book. It has the beginning and it has an end. end. Excellent. Now let's leave that and go forward. Now you recall very well, last week we started a little bit of discussion on the truth and the authenticity of the Holy Quran. Yeah. Truth and authenticity of the Holy Quran. Okay? And we did mention only one reason, if you recall very well last week, as to why Quran is authentic and Quran is truth. Who can tell me the first reason which I mentioned? It was predicted in the previous scriptures. Yeah, that? That uh, Quran was already introduced. Ah, we said Quran was already introduced. And it was predicted in the previous scriptures. And you look at all those scriptures of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you read them, you'll find out that there are places where those books talk and refer to Quran, which will be brought by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. If you say previous scriptures, what do we mean? Bible and eh? Taurat and Injil. Okay, now let's stop here. How do you convince or discuss with a Christian that Quran is authentic <coughs> by referring to his book. Last week we did this. Yes, Mama. There are verses in the, in the Bible where, where it talks about the comforter to come okay. who is going to be just like Moses. Yeah. Uh, with the mother and father. Good. So who can give me one of the verses in the Bible? Book of John 12:49. Ah, Book of John 12:49. Okay. Who can give me a practical example of a Christian community who took the teachings of Quran and as a result of that they converted to Islamic religion? Yes, ma'am. House and Hazaraj. House and Hazaraj. Today the most of the men who were there last week they were not here. Only three or four of them are here. So it's my house and hazard. What did we say about house and hazard? Uh, it was predicted in the book. Yeah. That, uh, Which book of this? The Bible. Yeah. That um, a prophet would come who would. Uh, <laughs> Say it in order. <laughs> Who would unite them? Okay. And then definitely Prophet Alayhi Salatu Salam came and united these two great families of Arab. But they were Christians in the holy city of Madinatul Munawwara. This they are like the people of Najran when Mubahila also took place. They were Christians. And they were in Loga has some scholars said for more than three hundred years. Some said 100 years before the coming of our beloved prophet. These people, they were Christians. Many people tried to make them reconcile, and they failed to bring them together. 
It was only when our beloved prophet came and he arrived in Medina and he realized that they were having serious problems amongst themselves. Prophet used Quran to introduce them to unity and they said, indeed, we read this in our book, which is Bible, and you are telling and you are making sense, then they decided to join Islam and they all reconcile between themselves and they are united. So this is a very, very important point that you have to mention. And also we mentioned that I mentioned two verses. One verse from Quran and one verse from the Bible. And I said if you compare these two verses, they give you good information in regard to the teachings of Bible about Quran. What are the two verses? Huh? Ah, Quran 93 verse 15 not 12 Quran 93 verse 15 and you compare to all those verses say John 49 or you say John 16 verse 12 to 14 or you say Deuteronomy you remember Yes. Deuteronomy which verse? 18, 18 verse 18. 17 and then uh, verse 15. 15 and then Deuteronomy verse 19, 19 17 ah, fantastic so if you compare these two verses you realize that Quran is making sense tonight we're just going to continue so the first reason or proof that Quran is truth and authentic is because all the previous scriptures they predicted and introduced Quran it's not only the introduction we find in Quran itself. But when you go to Bible, you find there are scriptures talking about the coming of the Comforter, who is Prophet And also you go to Old Testament, which is the book of Musa, you still find it. As I mentioned last week, yes, these scriptures were tempered with by people. But you can still find some good verses and scriptures in them that can be used to prove the authenticity of the message of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Number two is lack of contradiction in Quran. Lack of contradiction in Quran. As to why Quran is authentic. If you go through Quran and you understand Quran properly, you realize that there is no any contradiction in Quran. And now you look at, for instance, Quran 4, verse 82. I write the verse, then when you go back home, you can refer to the verse. When you check Quran 4, verse 82, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala himself mentioned about this book. And he said that there is no contradiction in this great book. So let me just at least read the verse for you in uh, English just to understand. But if you go back home yourself, you can make your own research about it and realize that this book has no any contradiction uh, in the, or discrepancies in it. The verse says like this, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. 82, okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Afala yatadabbarun al Quran. وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ إِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِي اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Do they not consider the Qur'an? Had it been from other than Allah, they would surely have found there in much discrepancy. So I want you to go home, you must make research on this particular verse. So the word of contradiction is اِخْتِلَافًا Yeah, اِخْتِلَافًا Ahsan to me. This one say this, the other one say this. So that's why Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said, if it was from other God, not this Allah that you know, then you are going to find a lot of contradictions. Because that God will say something, and this God will say something else. So therefore, one of the proof that we bank on to say, indeed this book is a truth, and this book is authentic, is because you will never find any contradiction in Quran. Whatever you find in Quran is the truth. Therefore, we used to say, our beloved Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he came with a true word of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third point is, Quran is confirming the previous scriptures. You see that other one in the first point, what did we say? 
We said the previous scriptures predicted and introduced Quran. This one, no, Quran, our own book, is also confirming the scripture. Now let us look at the verse and I explain something to you. The verse is, you look at Quran, 6 verse 92. Let us look at this verse also, Quran 6, that is an arm, verse 92, where Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala confirmed about Bible and then Injil, or the Torah. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, let us look at the verse. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And this is a book which we have sent down. Bringing blessings and confirming the revelations which came before it. When you talk of revelations, which came, of course, Sophie Ibrahim is there, but we're talking of the most, the big book one, like a Torah and Al Injil. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is confirming, but the problem is, when you look at these previous scriptures, as we mentioned earlier, when they were tempered with the Bible, like Paul, unfortunately, they tempered a lot with the Bible. Therefore, when you read the Bible today, you find there are a lot of verses or scriptures that do not make sense. You cannot make sense out of them. So what is the role of Quran in this regard, where Quran confirming the previous scriptures? They said Quran is confirming the previous scriptures, thereby giving a criteria of what is man-made and what is divine. So now if you understand Bible very well and you understand Quran, if you read Quran and then you compare what is in the Bible and what is in the Quran, you realize that there are certain things in the Bible that do not other well and sit well with what the Holy Quran mentioned. So this is where you use the Quran to be able to <coughs> differentiate between what God revealed and what man made, manufactured on his own. So the second and the third one is what? It confirms the previous scriptures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third point is, and the fourth, is that thinkers acknowledge the truth about Quran. And that is you find Quran 29 verse 49. Allah himself is mentioning Think as those who think and ponder and reflect, they will definitely acknowledge and accept Quran. Now, if you can check me the verse, I'll check it. Check me this uh, verse, Quran 29, verse 49. So, everyone who is a thinker and he claims to be intellectual, he has to acknowledge Quran. And therefore, Allah Himself mentioned in Quran, every thinker acknowledge the truth about the glorious Quran. Now go to the verse. Quran 29, verse 49. Nay, these are clear communications in the breasts of those who are granted knowledge, and none deny our communications except the unjust. Excellent. None deny our communication except the unjust. So therefore you realize that today, one of the natural signs that people use <coughs> To prove to the existence of Allah is the study about the cosmos, cosmology. People will study the world, they will study the universe, and through that they will be able to tell you there is someone who exists and who is above us. We said the best way to understand and to acknowledge the existence of God is a divine science. And the best divine sign is Quran. Whoever Quran, if you read Quran, Quran refers you, as I mentioned, it's just that Muslims, we are far away from Quran. That is why we think it's just a certain book that is sitting there. It is a book that has everything in it. And you can withstand the every difficulties in life when you know this book properly. Whoever thinks he knows properly, if you come with Quran, I promise you Quran will be able to score you free. So therefore, thinkers also acknowledge the truth about Quran. Now number five, fifth point. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Any, give any names of the speakers who acknowledge? Next week we'll do that. We're going to look at the scientific aspect of Quran. All these mathematical theories and scientific theories. Next week we're going to take some of them and put them there like balls and all of them. Akimidis principle. You put them there and then you bring Quran. 
you will check and see if it fits or it doesn't fit. Next week, inshallah, that will be our discussion. So they were not, they were not at the time of the Holy Prophet, they were after. We are talking of even our time. Of course, during the time of the there were many thinkers who came from different parts of the world, right? From Asia, even from Rome. Yes, Rome, they fought prophet, you know, but Allah predicted that they will be definitely overcome and conquered. And Alhamdulillah, they were conquered. But there were great thinkers in Rome who acknowledged the truth about glorious Quran. And Pesha, the same thing. But the Pesha, you realize that only few of them during the lifetime of Prophet like became more Muslim. As we mentioned last week, of course, the second Khalifa, Omar, was the one who sent and took Islam to the whole entire Pesha, especially in Iran. But they were great thinkers during that time. Like you realize when you check the letters that Prophet sent to many thinkers of the world. All those thinkers, they realize that Quran is a book that is making sense. Yes, there are those who acknowledge but fail to accept Islam as a way of life. And that is what is happening today. So now the fifth one is what? The miraculous nature of Quran. is another point which I'm going to ask you a question before we discuss this how does the miraculous nature of Quran becomes a proof for the authenticity and the truth about Quran yes the Quran made predictions that came true okay even though it seemed unlikely that those predictions would happen so for yeah. example there is the prediction when the Christians were fighting the Persians. Okay. And the Muslims felt close to the Christians because they felt that, uh, you know, it, it was the same faith. And they were given comfort okay. that the Christians would win. Okay. And they won, even though they had originally been defeated. So the fact that the Quran could predict something like that was an example of. Uh, okay. Is there any other example? How can we use the miraculous nature of Quran to prove to the truth and the authenticity of Quran? Uh, the Holy Quran itself was a miracle because it was like a miracle given to the Holy Prophet because of the art of the Holy Quran, the language of the Holy Quran. Which language? The Arabic language. The Arabic is it miracle? I mean, like. Um, Why not in Urdu or Gujarati? No, like the way people when they heard the Quran. They accepted that it's really a miracle language. It's a good point. All the two points are very good points. Any other point? I'm just trying you to be more interactive. Yes, Adrian. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Rome. Yeah. Yeah. That's a typical example of Quranic prediction of future, and it eventually happened the way Prophet Ali Salatu Salam predicted. Who can tell me some of the predictions of Quran that happened? Because I want to. The understanding of Quran is very important. Who can tell me? Apart from chapter Rome, Who can tell me? There are a lot of predictions. Maybe it's like uh, about the, the fetus. Okay, what did Quran say? Really predicted, I mean, now science is predicting. There are so many things which already Quran had predicted long back. Okay. The mm -hmm. miraculous things which now the science are proving them to. Okay. Like what? So many things like what? Well, the, the fetus, the gin, gin. Yes, yes. It's like a leech. Yeah. So how then do you use the miraculous nature of Quran to prove to someone who does not believe in Quran that Quran is truth? Think about the baby, the fetus in the mother's womb. The, the Quran round. explained that, that how the... That one, scientists will tell you this is how it happens. No, it's later on. So this was 400, 1400 years before. Did Quran predict that? Where did Quran predict that? Not predicted, but explain <laughs> how, how fetus grows in the mother's it's womb. True. That's one of the teachings of Quran. That's a teaching. It's not a miracle, that one. It's a teaching to tell you that it's authentic, but it's not a miracle. Yeah. You don't know the miracles of Quran. Quran is, Quran is saying that uh, in a position to bring another similar ayat like this one. Alhamdulillah, that is a very good point, which I'm going to write now. Yes, Achaka, it's a very good point. That unlike any other book, it has never been distorted. It has Excellent. Been distorted. Never been distorted. 
That is why if you know Quran, I tell you, you can try this. Especially if you are Arabic, you know a little bit of Arabic. Sit anywhere. If someone is quoting Quran, you'll know that this is Quran. If it's not Quran, you are able to tell me, even if you have not memorized one life, you are able to tell the person, no, this is not Quran. I remember when we were young, we were going to Madrasa. Sometimes you'd recite, you'd make mistakes, especially during hymns. So the teacher would be sitting somewhere outside. But he would say, oh, no, repeat, 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 it's wrong. So you used to get I mean, astonished. How could he able to tell you? Now you then realize that when you started learning about Quran, that this is one thing about this book. That if a person is lying about it, you are able to know it's lying. And if a person is telling the truth, you are able to tell the person. Now look at this point. We said all prophets sent. All prophets sent by God or Allah were endowed with extraordinary huh? power by which they perform one or two miracles to establish the truth the truth and authenticity of their messages and missions. See? Each and every prophet, this is number one point. Each and every prophet was, uh, let me just because the handwriting is on. Yani, all prophets sent by God were endowed with extraordinary power by which they performed one or two miracles to establish the truth and authenticity of their messages and missions. Every prophet, you look at all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this extraordinary power is what we call miracle, isn't it? Whereby they had to perform it because now they were dealing with people. And people would ask them questions. Are you telling the truth? What's going on? So you had to perform some miracle to convince the people that indeed I'm telling the truth. But look at this second point. <coughs> the Holy Quran, the Holy Quran is the everlasting, see, miracle of the Prophet of Islam. The Holy Quran is the everlasting miracle of the Prophet of Islam. Yani, you look at each Prophet came with certain miracle. There were no Prophets without miracle at the end of the day. But the everlasting miracle of our beloved, yes Prophet at one stage made dua, he raised dead out of it. At one stage he called a tree, you know, one Arab came to him then no, me before I believe in you, this tree which is standing there, I want you to call the tree. If the tree can walk and come to you, then Alhamdulillah, I will accept you as a prophet of God. Prophet made dua, he called the tree, and the tree just walked and came to prophet. So he performed some miracles. But that was not his major miracle to prove the authenticity and the truth about his message and mission or divinity. The one that prophet used as a main miracle is Quran al karim mm. Therefore, you realize how many thousand years, 1,435, I think now, or 36, 35. People fail to duplicate the exact of Quran. And as we mentioned, Quraysh during that time, they were very powerful in terms of literature and Arabic grammar. They were very powerful. They reached the peak. You realize we were discussing about it previous weeks. But they could not come up with even a verse of glorious Quran. 
So now here, how do we support our argument? We say that is the miracle of prophet. That is why you find in four verses you continue. You continue, you just continue writing. That is why you find in four verses of Quran, Allah invited all creations to provide at least a verse of Quran and they failed to provide. Four. So next week I want to give you a good assignment. Everybody go and find those four verses of Quran that call the whole humanity to bring at least one of them. They, they couldn't. That tells you that indeed it's a miracle. Because people like today, you find out that the knowledge has reached its peak today in the world. Technology is so high. People's mind is so fast. And the intellectual capability has reached certain level today, alhamdulillah. But still, Quran remains intact. If there were a time, or if there will be a time, when people will bring something like Quran, this is the time, today. I don't think after our time now there will be anything that will astonish us anymore. We have seen everything in life today. The knowledge is so powerful today, alhamdulillah. You are sitting here, somebody is sitting in the UK, you are WhatsApping him. Something is happening within a twinkle of an eye somewhere in Mecca. You are here sitting in your home in Nairobi. You have the scene of everything. More than even the one who is in that city. So knowledge has reached certain peak, but still the whole world failed to bring. Look at the attack against Islam. Here in here out people are attacking Islam. Don't you think if people had a way of producing the same of Quran, wouldn't they do? So that tells you that indeed this book is miracle. That is why, because Allah knew that your time, you Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, will be the time of knowledge and intellect. Because you see, we separate, we always try to separate between miracle and what is not miracle. You know, miracle is for the fools. Who don't? Miracle, you cannot think. I just want something extraordinary to happen. Then I accept. But the Ummah of Prophet, the level of knowledge is amazing. You cannot take people for that. Therefore, Allah gave him this book to say, this is your miracle. That's why I said it's very unfortunate that Muslims, you are far from Quran. If we are close to Quran, we are going to rule the world, promise you. But today, those who are not Muslims are using Quran for their own gain and for their own benefit. So therefore, we said Quran is a miracle because nobody managed to bring at least a verse of the Lord's word. You look at Bible, people brought a lot of verses in it. You look at uh, Moses' book, people brought a lot of verses. It said, therefore, inshallah, the only way I give this word, you go and find out the four verses in Quran which Allah used to challenge the creations. I want you to get me these four verses, inshallah, next week. You can Google it because today Mr. Google is there. Yes. But in addition to that, because Google alone is not enough, huh? I'm giving you one other extra work on that. Because it's four verses in miracle. It comes. Do me a You give the commentary of one of them. I want you to write in a piece of paper for me. Four verses inviting the whole creation to produce something like Quran. And then at least give me commentary of one of those four verses. And you tell me where you get the commentary from. Is it Tabataba? Is it Mizan? Is it Tariq Tassel? You know that big Quran is one of the good Quran, Alhamdulillah, in English. You have to tell me. There's a big Quran printed in America. It's a very good book. Quran. Yeah, it's a really lovely. Quran. I think in English world, that is, I think, the best one. Mm -hmm. So that is the homework I give you. And of course, last but not least, which help us to establish the authenticity of Quran under this fifth point, is that Quran is referred to itself as truth and balance. Mm -hmm. Truth and balance. Mm -hmm. And last week I gave you a verse, Quran 42, verse 17. 
Quran says this is sent down ah, in truth and balance. Quran 42 verse 17. Truth means what? It gives you information of every knowledge. Everything that you want to know in life, I promise if you go to Quran, you will find it. And it is also balance. Balance in the sense that we look at the procedures used in Quran is one of the best procedures. If you are someone who is a highly intellectual, Quran has a procedure for intellectual procedure. If you are someone who is too emotional, Quran has emotional way of addressing to you. So Quran has different ways. And of course, if you are someone who enjoy dialogue, Quran also has a procedure. Therefore, they said there are three procedures for Quran, three methods. One method is a dialogue method where Quran dialogue with you. And the other method, no, intellectual discussion, Quran discuss with you intellectually. And the last but not the least, emotionally, Quran attend to you. Inshallah, next week, we'll look at the scientific aspect of Quran. Whereby we're going to take verses of Quran and we take the reality of this world today. This thing is happened. Where do you get the reference from Quran? Do we have reference? We don't have reference to give us that more assurance and confidence in this book which Allah made in the last miracle of his beloved Prophet Muhammad. You have any question? If you have a question, you can ask. Yes, Hashad. You, you gave us references of John. Yeah, example, yeah. one of the Gospels. Yeah. But isn't our belief that the Gospels are not actually the Bible itself? Yeah. So uh, the, the Quran is not confirming the previous scriptures, not confirming the Gospels. Of no, the Deuteronomy is confirming. Deuteronomy is part of yeah. the Old Testament. John was one of the disciples, isn't it, like Peter. And it's like, though we have our beloved prophet where you have the Quran and you have a rewire. Isn't it? Jesus alayhi salatu was salam also in addition to Bible, he had some teachings which he had. So we believe some of the teachings were captured by his disciples, like Peter, like John, and them. So these are some of the things that John captured. But unfortunately, as I mentioned, today, what all the disciples captured, they made them together into one thing. And this is the doing of a person who never met Jesus and he never lived with Jesus by the name Paul. Bulus in Arabic they call. Paul now he came, he took all the teachings of John. He took all the teachings of this one and he brought them together. But we believe strongly the teachings of John also were very good teachings. Like the way we take teaching from some of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa It's a very good question. Any other question? But don't forget the homework, huh? <laughs> uh, I want to see how you make research on the Quran. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alayhi wa Halas. Yes, no problem. Why not? How do we say that the prophet was told in the previous Jahiliya? Jahiliya means. They don't know anything. Of course, Jahiliya means they are ignorant. That's why they wanted miracles. So, then we say, 